Hi, Julia Watts here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So I have another video for you featuring some fairy hook stamps which are appearing on Create and Craft on the 19th of December. Do check the schedule because I'm not sure on the times. Um, so we're going to be using a background paper from Tumbleshine and all the products I'm using today are available on my website juliawattscraft.co.uk for shipping to UK addresses and you'll also find them on fairyhooks.com for worldwide shipping too. And um, this is well used, I've got hardly any papers left of this at all. So Tumbleshine works with lots and lots and lots of stamps and like all of your fairy hooks um, papers they're a, a starting point really for you to get your crafting going and obviously they're all dry already so you're good to go straight away so like with the others as well tumble shine is, is a six by six paper pad there's 24 double-sided sheets uh, 24 designs two sheets of each so um there's there's 12 individual sheets repeated uh, twice and it's at 216 gsm and you can see from the cover sheet you've got um different sizes of circular backgrounds uh, you've got some with moons some with hills and some uh, just kind of like textured backgrounds and uh, they're like your jelly plate uh, backgrounds i suppose some of them but it's a really good starting point and they've also got um a bit of um, a colored texture background to them so that and there's, they are slightly different see if the camera can focus on that there we go and you see the next one is is more of a muted background so um they're really really good starting point highly recommend the background papers from fairy hogs so we've got a plan and it's a really simple these are these two demos i'm going to be doing for you now are really really simple uh, anybody can do these um, the, the background paper starts you off and the stamps do all the work um, so we're going to be using curlig and we're going to be using the fairy poem. I've used this quite a few times in this series of demos that I've done, um, which are um, uh, for the show. So, and this is the background paper that I've chosen. So it's got some hills on it and a moon there. And the other side is that one, both of them. It, it's really hard to choose. In some ways it's, it's, it's awful that they're double-sided, but you do get a repeat. So you can use that one once and that one once. Um, but obviously if you make a mistake on this side you turn it over and do the other side as well and it is a really good weight 216 it's like a light weight card so let's start by doing ourselves a background so I think as I've done before many many times we're going to use the fairy poem in the background and I think what we're going to do is the plan is to have the background and then Curlig's going to be is, is going to be over the background so you will see some of the fairy poem in his uh, wings if you don't want to do that then you can stamp this first and then mask him off and then stamp the poem afterwards you could of course pop him on on there on the hills and have your poem coming down on this side if you wanted to or you could have it on opposite sides you know there's so many different things that you want to do but i think for this one i'm going to go i'm going to be lefty and let's grab a block so we're not doing the stamping platform for this one we're just going to use a block but i am going to stamp it off first of all just to make sure that it's nicely um coated with ink because i'm going to use an archival and i'm going to go for a uh, speckled egg which is in the archival set number four. And I do sell the archival sets on my website and I also sell, send the, sell the archival tins as well. So speckled egg is a lovely light blue. Archival is gonna dry a lot quicker than your Versafine Clair. It is a waterproof ink, so you can do watercolours and stuff like that on top. It plays nicely with Versafine Clair. That stamps beautifully on top as well, but you do have to work quite quickly. So let's just stamp this onto my piece of scrap paper, just to check that I'm coating it nicely. So it's quite muted. It's a little bit faded in the background, but it's a background stamp, so that's absolutely fine. 
it dries super quick. I've just trimmed a little bit off my background, not a lot, just a little. Let's go bottom first. Try and be, be methodical when you ink up and then hopefully you'll get a good inking all the way over. The full stop is the bottom so you know you've got it the right way up because you can just about read it. So let's go for about, well, let's not do the full stop off, let's go about there. Don't faff around too much because the archival dries quickly. If you're worried, what you can do, like I've done in some of the other videos, is use your first fine clear and uh, do second generation stamping. So stamp it off once and then stamp it on your paper. And remember to do the same thing when you stamp it a second time. So there we go. There's the start of our background. Works quite nicely. Let's ink it up again. Just check that your full stop is in the bottom, so you know you've got it the right way up. Lots of tapping. Don't grind your ink pad into the stamp. It's not going to get you anywhere. Archival will stain, stale, uh, stain, stain your stamps. But don't worry, it's very, very friendly. As the name suggests, it's, it's um, archival ink, so you can actually use it in your scrapbooks and things like that. This time we're going to have the full stop because we've got no choice. Try and line it up so that it's straight. I think it moves in so it might not be 100% straight but it's a background. There we go. There's our background panel. To one side, let's get the curling out. And we will go into our stamping platform. change my mind actually where I put him. Because I can. You don't have to do this stick to your plan. You can have a plan. You don't have to stick to it. So plan was to have him there. In fact I do like him there so I think that's where he's going to go. Um and I don't I don't actually mind the writing in the background because he's you could you could argue that his wings are um transparent. They're slightly tinted but they're transparent. So you've got his little feet there. He can pop his little feet on the hill, like so. And he's got a beautiful um, swirly bit on his tail. Now, I'm not going to stamp in black. I'm going to stamp in a dark blue. I was going to go for bluebell, but I think I'm going to go for medieval blue, which is darker than bluebell. Just because we've got the blue tones um, in the um, background paper, I've obviously stamped with speckled egg as well, so um, I think I want to keep with those blue tones. It will probably look black on the screen, but I know it's blue. Okay, fairly good, good inking. Might have to stamp in twice, don't know. Background papers are very, very friendly to stampers. They're kind of um, semi-coated, which means that you get a really good impression first time a lot of the time especially when you, you, you um, you've been using your stamps on the same day you know you've already stamped in once or twice um, but I've not used curly for a little while so we might need to do him again oh look at him look at him we don't need to do him again at all he's absolutely magnificent he really is lovely <laughs> So th this is to do with the background paper. If you, if, if I just stamp that onto a watercolour card, I can guarantee I'd probably have to stamp it a second time because watercolour card is super absorbent and it, it just sucks up the ink. Do remember that first fine clays take a while to dry, so um, don't be, you know, just be careful around it so, so you don't smudge it. That's curlig. And let's grab a sentiment. Now, pick the, there's there's not many sentiments on the show. Um, so I might actually 
put once upon a time. I think that might be quite nice with him up there. I did have the, there's magic about you that's all your own. That's quite nice, but it's a smaller one. And I've actually used that on this one. So this is um, uh, a journal page that I created with um, a gel plate circular background. And um, the, the sentiment there on the side is called magic. And um, obviously pr pr done that like the fairy poem I've just done. And then that's that, there's that little um, about you sentiment that I've just shown you and then curlies on the right. So that's a similar thing to what we're doing now. So let's do the once upon a time just to be slightly different. And I'm not actually going to do anything else with this. I'm just going to pop the sentiment on and that's going to be it. Just make sure it's straight. Oh, that's my cat. Let me let my cat in. Come on, in you come. I know, I can hear you. He has to make an appearance. So what did we go for? We didn't go for blue, but we went for my teeth for blue. Lots of tapping on this. This is one of the first sentiments that Barry Hulls did. in a rush just take your time you find you get a better impression if you give that ink a chance to actually settle in there's a wonderful once upon a time and that fits so let's just clean that off a little bit not a lot and we'll grab that and I have got a matte now that's black um, I never decide what I'm going to stamp in until, until we're there. Uh, let's add a little bit of colour to the wings. Yes, come out the way, Ed. So I'm going to use the um, Sentiment to Yours watercolour blending brush pens. So I can, and I've sorted all mine into colour order. So this box has got blues in it and it's also got reds in it as well. Um, but they're all really wonderful colours to use. So basic, basic colouring and not, nothing really complicated. I do want to keep it quite light. So that's quite a nice colour, a bit of a contrast. And some of, this is a kind of a magical colour, this one. This one goes on like a green and it dries blue, which is so weird. So weird. And then we've got this other uh, pale blue here as well. Some of my pens are starting to run out after, I think I've had these for four years and they're just starting to run out. So we're only going to put, just, you, you can do your shading if you want to, but I'm just going to do it very, very simply. The thing about these pens is that they go up to a nice point so you can do the very fine lines very easily you could add glossy accents on the top if you wanted to what are you doing <laughs> just found some bubble wrap <laughs> don't you just love animals never work with animals and children they say don't they trouble is if i don't let him in he just claws at the door so let's add a little bit here Let's go for two colours. Oh yeah, a little bit of glitter, something like um, the um, stickles, glitter glues are nice to just add a little bit of sparkle if that's what you want. If that's what rocks your boat. Let's see the text in the background is disappearing. <laughs> I'm just keeping an eye on him. I'm so sorry, I don't know what he's up to. Up to, up to. <laughs> Up ahead and 
forsaken. <laughs> so where did we go there? We've just done that one there. Uh, I don't think this is completely symmetrical. I do like to do them symmetrical. He's got like wispy bits here. And that's his mane. So if we keep the mane separate for now. And let's see if this bit in this kind of tealy turquoise colour too. So I've done that one there, maybe not that one. Yeah, I'm definitely not even. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter one jot. I'll do the rest in this light blue. See, I'm not. I'm not actually blending at all. You can use your um, polychromos on here as well. I know Tanya's used her pen, other pencils on here. Um, you can use your um, Sakura Stardust on here. Um, or you can even use your um, uh, Sakura Glue Gel and add a little bit of glitter on top, fine glitter. You know, fairy hugs do do some glitters as well. Though I don't carry them. Um, Just adding a bit of this blue colour to go in there and there and here. He's still at it. I don't know what he's up to today, is it? <laughs> don't jump on there. He's on there. <laughs> Get down. All right, so there's Curlig. There's a little bit of colour to him. And just to keep in, in with what the colours that we've used, I think we will do his mane in this nice. Is it called a mane? I don't know. We'll do it in that colour there. And we'll add his little tummy. Little tummy scales, we do those in the same colour as well. Like so. Okay. I think I'm going to leave all these other bits just as they are, and then the background paper can do the work with that. And then just to finish off. Let's actually add just a little bit of, this has been sat around for ages I think on here. This is a bit of prize ribbon and it's oxide ink and uh, it's been, they must be on this, this for a couple of weeks now. They don't, they don't dry out very quickly which is fabulous when you, you're kind of making it up as you're going along. Just to edge that. Just finishes it off. <laughs> Can't believe he's up there. He's on a, a, a stack of drawers that are stood next to my desk. Looking down on us. Let's hope he doesn't jump down onto the desk. That could be when I pause. <laughs> on the mat to make it pop. Make sure it's straightish. Sometimes I don't think I cut straight. That's straightish. So there we go. There's lovely curlig sat on top of them little hit little mountain with the poem background. Let's hold it up so you can see a bit closer. 
really simple. Anybody can do that. Okay, so number two. So for number two, we're going to be using a background paper from Golden Glow. Golden Glow is um, a bit more moody um, for a background paper. And it's got, it's full of um, like autumnal colours, I suppose. So you've got your, your reds and your oranges, yellows, browns, greens. And uh, some of them have got hills on. And then the reverse side is just your um, background uh, sort of uh, colours rather than having a hill on it. And obviously you can put a sun on there if you want to. You could add hills to the, the background pieces. But it's the same, exactly the same. Six by six, 24 uh, double-sided sheets, 24 designs, two sheets of each, and 216 GSM. So the one that I've chosen is this one. And again, this one's got that kind of texture in the background, like a netted texture. And the other side is, is that and with, with kind of splodges. It's like a distress oxide background with, with kind of um, watermarks on it. But we're going to be using this side. And we have a plan, as usual. Again, this is a very, very simple one. So we're going to use Anya's tree. And Anya's tree is going to be stood on there like so. We're also going to be bringing it in Winston and Winston's going to be stood down the bottom here because he's going to be looking at the lovebirds who are in the tree and then we've got this wisdom sentiment. So that's that's what we're going to do. Really simple, nothing complicated at all. all right, let's fetch our stamps out of the way and bring in our platform. Still, I'm still working on this dirty sheet. <laughs> it's still got some life in it yet. So let's think now. Let's have it this way. Because I might want the tree slightly off the page. Make sure it's really butted up into the corner. Just in case you need to do it a second time. And let's get the tree. This is one of one of the biggest stamps that fairy hogs do. Let's just pop it on top of the hill there. It's got a little bit of grass coming out. But we are getting the whole thing in, which is fabulous. I might want to do it upside down because I've got a little bit of the top there. Let's swivel it again. These are things that you, you learn as you're doing it. And then if you don't do it, you regret it. So that's where it's going. Make sure that's okay. Pick it up. Do it this way. Looks a bit odd doing it upside down, but there we are. So let's do it in Green and brown. So let's do the tree in acorn first, fine Claire. And do if you're on Facebook, do join the uh, ask to join the fairy hug store. So within the fairy hug store. Uh, all the design team, so that the social media design team from the UK and from the USA, and also the um, TV design team, they all share their makes on there. There's, there's, I don't know, half a dozen from the design team probably every day, at least three or four anyway, uh, depending on whether the shows or not. Um, and then we also ask you to share your makes on there because we absolutely love to see them it's a lovely group so do ask to join lots of tapping I 
know that my, I've got sweet spots on my stamp about there. So I'm going to give it more attention just there. Might need to do it a second time anyway. Because it's a big stamp. A really big stamp. I wouldn't be able to use this on a block unless I had the stamp up and took the paper to it. Because I've only got some more hands. Get that sweet spot. Oh, missed a bit there as well. So we're going to go a second time. Did I use Pineco? No, I used it. I shouldn't really have more than one brown on my desk, should I really? Let's get rid of that blue as well. I know what I'm like. I pick up the wrong colour all the time. of its life and I need to pay attention to there and there and there. Here, here and here. The rest is very good. Oh, I still miss that bit there. Pressed on the wrong bit. Julie, you get a grip. Okay, so let's turn this round now. Get rid of my big unused tree. I'll turn it round so I can work on it properly, up the proper way up. Right, so we want a couple of lovebirds in the tree. are nice and dirty so I can actually see exactly where they're going actually I think I'm going to do them one at a time so then I can get them really close because you've obviously got the um, where the stamps have been trimmed so I'm going to do them one at a time so I can get them really close but I'm going to do Winston as well at the same time he's going to come down let's have him right down the bottom of the hill just like that. Looking up. And we do these in a darker brown. So we will go for the pine cone on this. Winston's got a pal called Lola, so there are two dogs in the Fairy Hugs catalogue. Come on, Winston. I'm going to go a second time just because I want to kind of, you know, hide the branch. I'm going to leave Winston alone now. I'm not going to do Winston a second time. I'm happy with him. You will always see a little bit of the paper um, because of the way that it's made. obviously have to do the second little bird about the same as well so you could that you can't see the branches so much now so because I've done it the second time let's grab the other little bird out let's see if we can put him nice and close and he's got wings so it doesn't matter if he's not really close and we do the sentiment as well at the same time which is the wisdom. I like this sentiment. I mean, you could I could have put a sun in there as well. Should we do that? Actually, let's pull this up. Let's just do the tangents. 
before we do you know you want to do it before you do the sentiment so let's get this little bird on I can still find my stencils and I haven't put them away. I might have done, so, so we might not do it after all. Okay, so that's the other bird, nice and dark. I've lost a little bit of the detail because I've done it so dark. grab a stencil don't think we want a big moon we we'll have a small one I might as well do it in here to keep the mess down and we'll grab we're keeping the date with the um, theme of the bags and I'll just grab some rusty hinge using regular distress ink just going around the edge I want to make sure I see it Just a little hint of the moon there. I like that. That works. And now we'll pop our sentiment on. Which is wisdom. Here it is. And it goes partly over the moon, I think. Don't want it right up there. I think I'll have it there. I mean, you could bring in some of the fairy dwellers as well, um, if you wanted to pop those on the trees. Um, see if I can find them, and we might do that. Sticking with the pine cone, that dark brown. got these heart vines as well and they're quite nice to underline things so um, there's two designs oh, which one to use let's use this one so we can actually have it so that it's going off the page a bit Around. It will make a lot of difference. I always tend to ink up the whole stamp because I can never remember which side needs to be needs to happen. So we could have it like that. We could have another one at the top if we wanted. So just to show you what it might look like. Where's the stamp? What have I just done with it? So you could have another one at the top, like that. Should we do that? Let's have that. So I need another piece of acetate. I've lost the acetate that goes on the back of that one. For no reason. Oh, 
Oh, one, that'll do. That might even be in one of them, I don't know. Oh, thanks, Ed. No, don't jump down, don't jump down. Absolute pest. Go away. acetate off and we're going with the acorn again it's funny how things evolve you can have a plan but the beauty of having absolutely loads of fairy hog stamps means that you can actually draw on them and uh, do lots and lots of other things that you didn't necessarily intend to do because they all work together they're absolutely fantastic so there's a little kind of border I mean you could go all around it if you wanted to but we're not going to do that I think that's that's quite enough and then finally let's grab those fairy dwellers what do you do with that acetate goodness knows how there it is I think that was the one actually excellent and a pair right little fairy dwellers so these are, we've got Condo Dwellers, Condo Dwellers 2, Ballerina Dwellers, Fairy Dwellers and witch, Witchy Dwellers. We've got lots of little, little tiny fairies. So let's have perhaps, I mean you could bring in woodland animals, you can bring in loads of different animals if you wanted to. Let's have one down there. And let's have one coming in up there. What else have we got? I don't want the sitting one. Oh, I think those have got mixed up a bit. She's got a cross leg. Oh, we could have her teasing Winston. That's what we could do. Should we just, let's just have, oh, there's one here. What does this one do? Can't tell which one that one is. Sorry, oh, it's that one. She's coming in like that, so let's have her right in the corner there. So we've got four. I know you're not supposed to have even numbers, but you can break the rules. Go even darker with these actually. Let's go for fallen leaves, which is a much darker brown. I don't use fallen leaves very often. It might look black. So we've got the one that's teasing Winston, got one down below. One coming in there and one coming in there. I think that's enough. We don't need to do them again. They're nicely detailed. Can you see them? There's any like on the ground. Maybe. I can't remember what colours on this one. It's a brown. Careful as you're going round that you don't smudge your first fine clear. I'm not gonna add any extra colour to this. You could add a little tiny bit to the little fairy dwellers. They're tiny. And I normally I have my light on them when I do that, my desk, desk lamp. So I'm not going to risk it. And we've got a piece of black card for this one. And this 
is sentimentally yours and PVA. So don't, you don't need a lot, but it's absolutely fine to use with your papers. There we go, there's your two projects. Let me give you a lot more ones over here. Nice and flat. Very different projects, but both I think very achievable, very easy to use. The stamps, they're good quality, photopolymer stamps manufactured in the US. So um, thank you for watching and remember that you can find everything on my website for um, dispatching to UK addresses and also from fairyhoggers.com. And it'd be lovely if you were, had time, if you could uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, like and subscribe a video. There's over 50 videos using fairy hug stamps on there. And uh, there are also lots of videos with for other manufacturers, including Sentimentally Yours as well. So all I need to say is thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.